You know, some people think video games are a waste of time, but today I'm going to use one of the best video games ever made, Portal 2, to teach you about physics. We're going to start with mass and velocity, sir. Follow me. Okay. Hello, mm -hmm. sir. Okay. Come on down for your first lesson, sir, okay. about velocity. Can you see me from where you are standing over there, sir? Yeah. Do you see me strafing back and forth? Yeah. Okay. So, velocity is like speed, but as you watch me strafe back and forth, I'm not really moving in a particular direction, am I? I'm kind of like staying in the same spot. So even though I'm a really fast robot dude, I'm going like maybe 20 miles an hour, am I really moving anywhere? No. no right? All right. Well, watch this. Do me a favor, and can you shoot a portal where my yellow is? Yeah. And then shoot another one on the wall in front of you. All right. So as I jump in here, I can say that not only am I going 50 miles an hour, I'm going 50 miles an hour towards you, sir. Towards mm -hmm. you. So yeah. you have to be going a direction and you have to be moving. Makes sense? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Cool. High five, sir. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Now we are going to talk about mass. Mm -hmm. So what I want you to do is come on over here and stand on this imaginary scale. Can you do that for me? Mm -hmm. How much do you think you weigh, sir, in pounds? Probably 1,000. 1,000 pounds? Oh my gosh. That's amazing. Uh, I mean, you must be made out of like some special alloy or something. Well, follow me. Um... Again, we're going to be learning all about mass. What I want you to do is hop in that portal, okay? Okay. And in a second, what I'm going to do as you're going up and down through there is I'm going to shoot a portal there, and I'm going to shoot another one. You're kind of going to ping pong back and forth here. I want What I want you to notice is that when you are at the top, you actually weigh slightly less than 1,000 pounds. Mm-hmm. Right. So, yeah. you weigh 1,000 pounds at the bottom, you weigh slightly less at the top because the farther that you get away from the gravitational pull of the center of the Earth, or whatever the heck kind of planet we're actually on here, the less you weigh. Does that make sense? Yeah. So, weight is really just a measure of gravity between two masses, right? Mm -hmm. it's, it's, it's how much two masses are attracted to each other. Uh, and so it looks like, yeah, the puzzle that you're working on there, you got to hit them both at the same time. You interact with that one. Now you got to interact with this one. And then we've got some balls, ladies and gentlemen. Please don't destroy Begin these. These are going to be three, uh, used for my three, demonstration, sir. One. Okay. So um, if weight is a measure of how much two masses, like these balls, are attracted mm -hmm. to each other, Mm -hmm. Mass, sir, is the measure of the amount of matter in something like these balls. Does that make sense? Yeah. So, I have mass. You have mass. Everything has mass. Except, what's the one thing you think that does not have mass? Air. Light. Good guess. It's light. Um, which is a whole other topic. But even sound has mass. The Ooh. human eye can't. Yeah. Yeah. The human eye, we can't see sound, but it still has mass. The point is, sir, your weight changed as you got higher. Mm -hmm. You were no longer 1,000 pounds at the top of that. You were slightly less. So if you went to Mount Everest on Earth, you're going to weigh slightly less than at sea level. But your mass, mm -hmm. sir, this is important, your mass didn't change. Unless, yeah. well, unless you went to the bathroom in the air and got rid of some mass. <laughs> <laughs> and so let well actually let's let's play that out let's say you went to the bathroom on your way up in the air sir which would be very hard to do your mass would then have changed mm -hmm. but let me ask you this did the mass of the planet we're on change just because you went to the bathroom no do you know what that's called that's called the law of conservation of mass, sir. Mm -hmm. So, for example, in fact, you have a blue gun, so this is going to work great. Do me a favor, sir. Fire your, your blue gun 
anywhere you want. And let me know when you're let me know when you've done it. I'll be watching. Okay. Mm, can't do it there. I can can't do it there. It's gotta be on can like I... a surface. You can you can overdo overrule my that's fine. Great. You got a blue you, you, you got a blue portal. Let's mm -hmm. imagine, sir, this is water. Do you see this yeah. blue portal? This is water. Mm -hmm. Can you get rid of that water? No. I want you can you make the water leave this room? Try. Just just try. Hmm. Well, it's still there. So, sir, were you successful getting rid of the water? No. No. <laughs> you can't get rid of the water. And that's my point. The amount of water, sir, on Earth never changes. Mm -hmm. It just moves around. Water can turn from a liquid into a gas, and we call that water vapor, sir. Mm -hmm. Like you just vaporized that ball. Yeah. And that vapor can move around... But that water vapor can't escape Earth's atmosphere. So that ball mm -hmm. you just vaporized, it can't escape Earth's atmosphere, sir. Mm -hmm. Because it's really, really cold up there. And so at a certain point, the vapor just turns into ice and the ice just comes back down to Earth anyway. And that's called a closed system. The amount of mass in that water remained constant no matter what you did. And mm -hmm. that, again, is the law of conservation of mass, sir. We are learning, ladies and gentlemen. Mm -hmm. Now... Here's the thing, sir. Earth is not a closed system. Earth's mass does change ever so slightly. And how do you think Earth gains mass? And I'll give you a hint. It has to do with space. The meteors. Meteors! Good, good guess! You're right. It's actually meteors. It's cosmic dust. Those things settle on Earth's surface, which gains mass. But the Earth also loses some mass. And we just talked about how Earth doesn't lose mass from water, but something else can escape our atmosphere. Any idea? Mm, no. Some gases, like hydrogen and helium, that can escape our atmosphere. Now, both of those ga gases happen to be the lightest gases in the universe. Hydrogen also happens to be the most explosive gas, hence the term H-bomb. But even those, you know, gases they're very very light there's there's still matter right and so it means if if matter leaves the system you lose what mass mass yay ding 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 all right sir you're doing great well for this last lesson i'm gonna need a couple balls do we have any did you destroy them all where are they i have one here okay all right and we got one, one here there. okay so do me a favor Okay, we've already established that gravity is caused by mass. And so, what has the most mass in our solar system? Um. The sun. A black... The sun. I was about to say a black hole. Oh. Oh my gosh. I sure hope a black hole is not in our solar system, but you're right. Black holes can have a lot more mass than the sun. Mm -hmm. Um, all right. So, the, in our solar system, the sun has the most mass, and that's why it's called a solar system, hence the term sun. Everything is orbiting mm -hmm. around the sun, because why? The sun... Has mass. That's right, it has the most mass. But, here's the interesting thing. There are some other things about mass that can make gravity more or less powerful. Mm -hmm. Do you have any idea what that is? Here's um, an example. I'll show you. Question for you, sir. Is the gravity between these balls stronger, weaker, or about the same since they're closer together? About the same. Stronger. So, so this is the main lesson. As objects get closer together, the gravitational pull gets stronger. As objects get farther apart, the gravitational pull gets weaker. So not only can the just mass of an object affect the strength of its gravitational pull, but how close together things are can affect gravitational pull. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. Well, what we're going to talk about now, sir, is density. So let's imagine your ball is full of, I don't know, what do you want your ball to be full of? Um, oil. Oil. All right. My ball is going to be full of gas. Based on that alone, 
which object, whose ball has a stronger gravitational pull? Um. Uh. The one with oil or one, the one with gas? The one with oil. Why? Because it has more density. That's right. It's heavier. It's got more mass. It's more dense, right? Um, so, for example, um, in fact, go ahead and put your ball on the slot here. Okay. I'm going to destroy mine. All right. One of the most dense things in the universe is a black hole, sir. Mm-hmm. And it's basically a lot of matter crammed into a tiny space. So, mm-hmm. we got rid of all the balls except this one. Take a look at it. See it? This is our black hole, sir. Yeah. Now, all, let's imagine all the balls were just crammed into this one. And this is the black hole. So it can suck everything into it, including light. But it's really not that big of a problem because it would have to get, like, really, really close to it. Like, if you replaced the sun with this black hole, it's not going to really be that big of a problem. Other, I mean, we'll be very cold, and that's a huge problem, but the Earth's still going to orbit around it just fine, right? Mm-hmm. To get sucked yeah. into it, you would have to get, like, really, really, really close. Make sense? Yeah. All righty, sir, this concludes today's lesson. What did you uh-huh. learn? You learned about velocity? You learned about mass? You learned about learned physics? About... Yeah. And we played some Portal 2. Hey, hey! Mm-hmm. Eh? GG's. GG's. <laughs>